people fall in love with your brand and the name on the door, and though it's just a change of the name to you, there is a feeling of loss for that member. And there is some mourning internally that goes on, not just from the, the member, but from the staff as well, too. They didn't sign up to be a member of Stronger Personal Training. They signed up for Frank Nash Training Systems. And though you may just say, well, listen, the club's actually better. Nothing changed, just the colors. Uh, you know, we're actually offering new programs. There is a sense of, of mourning and loss for that client internally that uh, you have to really take into account before you make the move or when you're making the move. Welcome to episode 190 of the industry's leading business podcast for fitness owners and managers. Each week, we invite business experts, coaches, authors, and owners from around the world to share their expert advice with you, the FBP family. This month's interviews are brought to you by our podcast partner, Jim Sales. Jim Sales gives your sales team the tools they need to capture, nurture, and convert new members. Visit gymsales.net to find out more. Hi, everyone, and welcome along to the show. I'm your host, Chantal, and today our special guest is the owner of Stronger Personal Training, Frank Nash. For the past 20 years, Frank has been committed to achieving excellence in the field of fitness training and performance enhancement. He's an experienced fitness business owner, best-selling author, and international speaker. I absolutely loved speaking to Frank today because not only is he incredibly generous with sharing his experience, but he's also down to earth, he's honest, and I just know that you're going to walk away today with information that will help your fitness journey. Here's what we talk about. We start today's chat on the topic of branding, and Frank shares what he has learned from two business rebrands. We discuss his coaching team and how he ensures that they consistently deliver an amazing experience for their members. Frank shares his experience and his opinion on the employee versus contractor question. We discuss using technology and how gamification can be a game changer for member engagement and retention. And we finish off chatting about some tips for fitness owners who want to stand out in a crowded market. Now, straight after my interview with Frank today, I want you to listen into the quick chat that I had with Steve Tharrett from Club Intel. Each year, Club Intel conducts the International Fitness Industry Trend Study. This is a study that collects data from the fitness industry all over the world, and the research findings are made available free of charge. Steve and I chat more about the study a little bit later on in the show, but I really want to encourage all of you to get involved and to have your say. Now, last but not least, today's pre-call Quick Five Five guest is the keynote speaker for the 2018 Ursa Women's Leadership Summit, Henna Inam. So make sure that you stay listening after the Club Intel update to hear my chat with Henna. Wow, as you can tell, this is going to be a massive episode and we're about to transition into this week's main interview. But first, here's a message from our newest podcast partner. Jim Sales allows you to plan, implement, and monitor a proactive sales strategy that's automated and uniform. You can give your sales team the tools they need to capture, nurture, and convert new members, which means it's easier than ever before to grow your member base. Make sure you head over to gymsales.net to find out more information. Enjoy this week's interview with Frank Nash. Hey, Frank, welcome along. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Now, we have a huge range of topics that we're going to talk about. And the place that I was hoping we could actually start is on the topic of branding, because for anyone that doesn't know, you've actually rebranded your business twice, I believe. You started as Platinum Performance, and that went to Frank Nash Training Systems, and now you're called Stronger Personal Training. Can you give us a little bit of an insight behind what it was that motivated you to make those changes? Oh, of course. Uh, There's some great stories behind some of these. Platinum Performance, that goes back to 2002. Before I opened my business, I worked at a big box club and it just happened to be a gold gym. Now, like most of us training dudes or dudettes that happen to move on to own our own business, 
Uh, normally, we've worked at a big box club before we start that studio type model. It's just, I just hear it all the time. Now, since I worked at a Gold's Gym and the transition wasn't as smooth as I would like it, I was going to show them. So, what's better than gold? Platinum. So, we went platinum performance. 100%. I swear in my life, it was just <laughs> out of spite. It really was. So that was that was the name, Platinum Performance. I was going to one-up them and show them. You know, clearly I was just being young and salty. But uh, that was the, the really the, the reasoning behind the name of Platinum Performance was just to show them that I'm going to one-up you even with the name. So, um, what, so what happened over the years is, again, it's Platinum Performance, but, you know, I'm Frank Nash. I'm training 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., Monday through Friday. I'm working every weekend, every holiday. Though we evolved to have multiple coaches, it still was all about me. So though my club was called Platinum Performance, nobody called it the Platinum Performance. They were like, I'm, I'm going to go train with Frank. Hey, do you work out at Frank's? Yeah, I'm going to Frank's. Hey, you heard of that place, you know, Frank Nash? So it really was all about me. So in a, in a, and again, I'm being honest, in a salty move, I'm sorry, in, a, in this very selfish move, I decided to just say, if, ever, if everyone's calling it Frank Nash anyway, let's just call it Frank Nash Training Systems. So it was really a way for me to selfishly build my brand, my personal brand. And so we evolved into that. So we fast forward years later and I kind of grew up and I woke up and I go, it really, though, I, though it was about me, it shouldn't be about me. Um, what if something were to happen to me? Let's just say I got in a car accident, I got hurt, injured, and the club still, you know, was there. I'm not around. Or I, I don't know about you, but I, I would have a. I, I was having a hard time collecting a check or a payment from someone who I never met. I mean, they're writing a a, a payment to Frank Nash Training Systems. I'm not. I don't even know this person, and I really, really want to challenge my my staff and my employees to become bigger versions of themselves. I want them to flourish. And I think it's kind of hard, you know, being a part of a company that has just a, a person's name on it who may not be there all the time, who may be doing other things. So looking forward and being more of an adult, I said, okay, how can I position this club where it's an entity by itself, where maybe at some point, not that I have any plans of doing this. I, I wanted to sell this club or somebody wanted to buy it. Hell, maybe I wanted to sell it to one of my employees. A stronger personal training, which is a new name, is a lot more advantageous to buy or sell than a Frank Nash training system. So any of you trainers or coaches out there, if your name's on the door, just keep this in mind. If you ever want to sell your club, if you ever want a franchise or whatever, if your name's on the door, you're tied to it. You're not, they will never let you out. So it's an exit strategy as well, too. So it really, if you think about it, everyone, it was an evolution between me being a salty trainer to a selfish trainer to gr maybe growing up and being more of an, an adult in this world. It's funny you use the word evolution because that's exactly the word that popped into my head. And I think anyone that has either launched a brand or been through a rebrand can appreciate just what a massive job that is. And, and plus quite a, a costly job as well. Oh my God. It's so, yeah. it's so expensive. <laughs> so expensive. You know, there's so many things to take into account. So give us a bit of an insight on, on, I guess, what the impact was in your business and, and perhaps some of the challenges that you faced when you did make those changes. Well, ultimately it, it's very expensive and you'll be shocked in the world of technology and social media, everything that's tied to your brand. And I'm telling everyone right now, if you want to put a dollar amount on, sorry, excuse me, if you want to put a dollar amount on it, it's going to cost you a minimum of 50 grand if you rebrand, just minimum. That's you being cheap. Um, and it could cost you up to, to, you know, 75 to 100 if you're trying to be like some crazy wizard. Now, uh, the most challenging thing, and, and especially for us club owners out there, is when you rebrand, though just the name may change on the door, let's just say, for me, for example, when we went from Frank Nash Training Systems to Stronger Personal Training, 
I actually thought our club got better, but we did lose some members because of just the name change. People fall in love with your brand and the name on the door. And though it's just a change of the name to you, there is a feeling of loss for that member. And there is some mourning internally that goes on, not just from the the member, but from the staff as well too. They didn't sign up to be a member of Stronger Personal Training. They signed up for Frank Nash Training Systems. And though you may just say, well, listen, the club's actually better. Nothing changed, just the colors. Uh, We're actually offering new programs. There is a sense of of mourning and loss for that client internally that uh, you have to really take into account before you make the move when you're making the move. So if you decide to rebrand, um, I would let your members know literally four, three months beforehand, tell them why you're doing it, have an open door policy, explain to them you uh, individually why, why you're doing this. Uh, make sure your staff feels like they're involved with the change. There are so many intricate details that I overlooked the first time that helped me rebrand the second time because you will lose people. You think it's a simple just change of the name on the door. It is not. It's a complete culture shock for some of your clients in their view. That is such a great insight. And, and thank you for sharing that with us. If you, and, and I'm sure that you're not going to rebrand again, but if you were, was there anything that you learned the second time around that you would do differently? Or do you oh, think man, you can it down now? Oh no, I don't have it down. Uh, it, you know, I would, I would even have a, a a bigger open door policy for my clients. You know, as as trainers and and, and owners, we we strive ourselves on being leaders, so we think that we always know what's best for our clients. I would really extend that open door policy even more, and make my members have the even the just the illusion, the illusion that they have a say in me changing their club, not my club. Mm. their club because i mean either way it's coming you're forcing it on them i would have a more open door policy where they can have make them at least have the illusion that they have a bigger say on on this massive change in their life i mean people think it's just a, a, a change of the name on the door these people sometimes come to your club every single day i see them more than i see my family so for them it's their it's their family it's their escape it's their second home and for you to just change it without asking them is honestly it's pretty shitty so so when you refer to open door what you're saying is that you would you would literally reach out to them and and get their input get their views get their opinions 100 Mm percent i would say do it electronically in the club if you own the club i want you to park your ass in the lobby and i want you to ask every member how they feel and shut your mouth and listen to them whether it's good or bad, nod your head, smile, and thank them. It sounds like it's a big task, but it's not. It's very important. It's something that uh, – and there's, there's, a, there's a lot of great interviews out there when it comes to rebranding and, and the feeling of loss and remorse, which, again, uh, is probably the biggest obstacle that any of us are going to run into. Yeah. You know, Frank, one of the things that you mentioned in there is you did talk about the the people within your business. You mentioned your team. And I actually was listening to an interview that you did where you said, if you want to build or grow your business, you need great coaches. So I was hoping that you might be able to give us a bit of a view about the structure of Stronger Fitness and the role of your coaches in your business. Yes. Uh, as, as a business owner, any business owner, you can't do it by yourself. You don't want to do it by yourself. There's only so many hours in the day. And at some point you got to sleep and you need teammates and people around you to drive that culture. So the structure of, of, of stronger personal trainings coaches is what I need is I just need rock stars. I mean, the X's and O's lunges, squats, pushups. That's easy. I just need really cool, fun, sometimes weird people, I mean, in a good way, that are just those light bulbs that all the moths are attracted to. So we spend a lot of time on the personal experience, the personal, um, what it, just, just, just making sure our members are having the best customer experience they possibly can have. So it sounds so silly, but we practice 
high fives. You know, you know, we practice fake laughing at a member's joke, smiling while you talk, remembering every single member's name. These are way more important than any sort of periodized fitness program any strength coach could come up with. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And just a couple of more questions, Frank, in relation to your team, because you've been in business for, for such a long time and you've obviously gone through a few different transitions over that time, where the business is at currently, are your trainers employees or do you have contractors in the business? We have all employees in, in, and I, I used to have, we were way back when as Platinum Performance, all independent contractors. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a much better move to go with employees because we always use the word culture. Y- you are building a culture. You are building that that place that your members go to. It's their second home that they love. And you want folks around you who believe and want to be a part of your culture, who are always driving your message. If they're an independent contractor, they're really just renting space in your gym. And they're not building your culture. Believe it or not, they're hurting it. They have their own agendas, they wear their own brand, they talk their own trainer language, and it's just confusing. And you really can't, it's really hard to retain independent contractors. I mean, you're not, you're not really paying them. They're kind, of making, they're kind of making their own schedule, their own hourly wage. You're just facilitating a place for them to train. So you're always going to go big picture and think three steps ahead. And you got to get these people as employees. Maybe at first, they're not busy. You have them on some sort of salary or low hourly rate. But you're thinking to where the business is going to be, not what it's doing right this second. So you might be biting the bullet to start, but it's way, it's way worth it. The, the juice is worth the squeeze. Get everyone as an employee so they can be a part of your culture. But you also want folks who want to be part of your culture. Frank, you mentioned earlier that when you, with your employees, that you've got, you know, unique, different people within the business, different personality types. So what is it exactly that you're looking for when you're going out and recruiting new team members? Oh, it's, it's just that human interaction. Do you make me want to hang around with you? I mean, I, like, I, like I mentioned before, are you that light bulb that all the moths are attracted to? Do you have that Care Bear stare. Do you take that <laughs> shining light from your belly and just turn the bad things good? That's what you're looking for, charming people. And when, when people use the word charming, what does that mean? They have good energy. So um, again, the fitness end of it, lunges, squats, I could care less what you know. I'm looking for those attractive personality type folks that you just want to be around. So with that in mind, Frank, tell me a little bit about the professional development that you do with your team because you're hiring based on, you know, these these awesome personalities, people that you know are going to connect with your members. What do you guys do when it comes to professional development, skills development, that side of things? Well, um, fr- from an onboarding process, we have a very robust internship. We, we have every semester. So and again, from, from that standpoint, It's really funny. When we started our internship like 10 years ago, it was all X's and O's. I mean, literally flooding these these poor kids with all these books, knowledge of the anatomy, physiology, kinesiology of exercise. It's funny. Now, we do really none of that. It's crazy. We spend the first week of them just standing in the lobby, smiling, introducing themselves, and remembering members' names. We spend a whole week just on names the next week. We spend a whole week on the tone of their voice. The next week, we spend a whole week just on smiling when you talk. It is crazy. So it's really, we teach all these basic skills now through our internships that really may have nothing to do with exercise, but it teaches them just to be good human beings and successful human beings. So they could take the skill set anywhere and be successful. So that just from uh, an internship standpoint, uh, and how we develop them. What we do from a, an ongoing standpoint for the entire staff is we meet every Thursday. We used to meet once a month. We used to meet every other week. But I'm a strong believer in you have to have that belly to belly at least once a week with your, with your employees, especially as in, a, in, a, in a gym setting. So our development, it, it could be anything from, uh, from 
fitness, exercise, to someone from outside the industry we bring in, just talking about basic business and their experiences. So it used to be, I would always bring in an exercise person. We're going to learn kettlebell snatches. We don't really do any of that anymore. It's more bringing in other gym folks, or other business folks to really just share their experiences, their triumphs, their challenges, and how they overcome them. There's nothing that, uh, that quite compares to that, is there? Absolutely not. I mean, you, you got to go through the battle. And it's, it's, it's so funny. I, I, I use this joke all the time. Um, I bring in some speakers and some, some of my friends in the industry who will legit, Chantel, tell the exact same story I told the week before. <laughs> and and, and they, oh my God, I can't believe they told that. That's so funny. It was such an inspiring. I'm like, I told you that. I go, not only did I tell you that, that person stole my story. <laughs> but of course, they said it. So it's, 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 it's gospel. Oh, you know what? The funniest thing, Frank, I, I always think it's like when your, your mum or dad tells you to do something, you know, it's like when it's your club and you're telling them to do yeah. something that they, they, they shut off. But when an, someone, an outsider comes in, it's a whole different story. Oh my God. So, so funny story. My, my whole family is like completely out of shape. Everyone says, Oh, your family must, they must love working out. No, like no. exercise <laughs> is kryptonite to them. And so, um, I, my mother, she could walk down the street and a homeless person could roll over and, and just yell at her like, did you know if you consume less calories and you work out more, you'll lose weight? And she'll like go, oh my God, did you know <laughs> that if you just watch your food intake and you move your butt a little more, you'll lose weight? And I just stare at her and I'll say, yeah, imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> News <laughs> Isn't that something? News flash. Yeah, that's, <laughs> exactly. that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Hey, Frank. So I want to uh, I want to chat to you about technology. We did uh, touch on this briefly during your pre call quick five five last week, and I know this is, plays a major role in your club. So can you give us a bit of a view inside your club? Talk to us about how you use technology. Wow, we uh, we try to get everyone hooked up to, to to our tech as soon as possible. We challenge our members before they even join our club before they set foot in an orientation to download our app. So right away, we're, we're hitting them with it. So um, they come in day one, they have our app. We're hitting them up with a, a MyZone belt right away. For those of you who don't know, it's the most craziest, awesome wearable technology belt in the known universe. It's absolutely crazy. We are MyZone so, uh, best here on the, on the Fitness Business Podcast. Oh, my yeah. God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we, we get them hooked up so we can gamify their gamify and track their exercise. From day one, we have them involved in that, that tech community of challenging other members. So right from the get-go, we have them hooked up to some sort of tech. But from an ongoing communication standpoint, whether it's social media, whether it's our text message, email marketing, if you're not using uh, you know technology, it's, it, it is such a a time sink filler. It, it, it's going to streamline your business that much faster. And it's going to gamify and make your, your members have that much more of a, a, a fun experience. Now uh, I would just warn people tech is great, but uh, don't over tech people. You want to make sure you, uh, you are personally talking and touching them as well too. Yeah. So I want to know more about your app because you said that you get people joined up to your app before, you know, just during their sign up process, their onboarding process. So what does, what's in that app? You know what? My, my app is very simple. It just gives them a vehicle to book appointments, us to hold them accountable to that appointment and give us, and, and from a business standpoint, it's an easier way for them to give us their money. Yeah, right. Okay. So they're right. so they're basically using that that you can set up their their um direct debit through the app? Yeah, yes, they they can buy, purchase, they can uh make appointments, cancel appointments. It's uh but also they can receive our 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 push notifications or our text notifications directly from that app as well too. It's super simple. And again, it's it's just just trying to make it easier for them to get their butts in the door of the club and cancel, um, reschedule, et cetera. Okay. And how about the usage of my zone? Cause you mentioned the word gamification. Do you run? Oh yeah. So yeah. Tell us a bit more about that. I'm sorry. We, uh, we yeah, we run tons of challenges. What, you know, we run weekly, I'm sorry, weekly challenges, monthly challenges. And sometimes we do pop-up daily challenges 
For example, I could say, hey, tomorrow we're doing a pop-up challenge. Everyone who gets 100 MEPs, which are my zone effort points, will put you into a raffle and I'm giving away some protein powder. And again, what we're really trying to do is just make sure our members are engaged, not just on a, not just the hour they're with us in the club. I want to engage them the other 23 hours as much as possible and, and, and just keep their attention span always with us. And plus, challenge and fun as well, too. Everybody likes challenges. Everyone likes fun. Everybody likes uh, gamification. That's exactly how we use my zone. And we always tie in some sort of cool prize. And usually gym owners, when I tell them that story, they go, like, oh, man, yeah, but it's so expensive. Listen, it's part of your marketing budget. Spend the money, you cheap. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> So when you just said there um, that you want them interacting with you sort of, you know, 24 seven, the time that they're in the club and outside the club, just for anyone yeah. at home that's not familiar with my zone, because so for me, for example, I use my, my zone belt belt as an individual because my club, my gym doesn't have my zone in the club. So Shame I, on use, them. I, I know, right? So I <laughs> use it and I, and I use the app. So I connect to the app. But what you've got in your club, you actually have the screens on club, so in the club, so people can actually see their results as they're training, right? Of course. I tell you what, though, but, but, we, but we'd like to get them to use it when they're on vacation, whether they, if they go away for a weekend, they're on holiday. Whatever that is, we set up some sort of structure behind my zone so we can still have them interact with us and be a part of the club. So those of us who have members who might say, you know what? I'm leaving uh, for a month. I want to put my membership on hold. No, 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 no. Here's what we're going to do. Just because you're leaving the area doesn't mean your fitness is going to leave you. I'm going to set you up with a program, both exercise and nutrition wise, and I'm going to keep track of you and hold you accountable through my zone. So you don't have to put your fitness and health on hold. You're still part of our family. Let's go, baby. Now for this week's Fitbispiration. So I've got one very last, very important question to ask you, and I'm hoping that you can finish off today by sharing with us three tips that you would give to fitness business owners who want to stand out in a crowded market. Oh, great. Uh, that Actually, that's the story of my life. I'm always trying to stand out in the fitness business world. The, the single most important thing is... Uh, just don't do what everyone else is doing. It's such a, such a saturated business environment. And if you scroll through Instagram and you look at other gyms or their fitness space and it kind of looks like yours, I think, I think you should try to break the mold and just do something a little different. I think everything is starting to look exactly the same. Just an example. So you have rubber flooring and you have green turf. Wow. You're just like every other gym. Yeah, but I'm a better trainer. No, your members don't care. Well, from a marketing standpoint, dare to be different. Um, that's my advice. And, and whatever that means to you, dare to be different. And, but from an aesthetic point, point of view, from a personality point of view, be different because it's such a crowded space, Chantel. Number two is um, try to think to where the ball is being hit and run there. Um, it's kind of very similar to the first one I said, being different. But from a business point of view, really sit down and think, grab a cup of coffee at your local shop and just really sit down and think, where is this business going to be two, three, four years from now and start planning for that. And again, I would say my advice would be, you're really not in the fitness industry, my friends, you are in the entertainment business. Think about that and run with that. You are in the entertainment business, not the fitness industry. Anybody can squat, lunge, push, pull, and get someone tired and sweaty. Can you entertain them? Can you take that member who is deciding between canceling country club membership or canceling training with you? How do you keep them? It ain't through lunges and squats. You're in the entertainment business. The third thing I would do is don't ever be afraid to ask for help. If you're in the industry, you probably do have a bit of an ego. We all do. But... Eat some humble pie. There's a, it's very easy in this world now with technology to reach out to almost anybody, get a hold of anybody. You'd be surprised of how many people in this industry who you may look up to are very generous with their time. And reach out 
ask for help, save yourself a lot of the trouble. I've been in the business since 2002 and I wish I would have done this sooner. Don't be, uh, don't be stubborn, be humble, ask for help, get there sooner and you'll be surprised. So in a lot of ways, I would say hire a coach, get an appointment once a month with someone you look up to who's, who maybe inspires you and say, Hey, can I hire you maybe once a month to get on a call and you just hold me accountable. I mean, my whole life is holding people accountable. Can you do the same for me as I do for my members and get me to that place I need to be? So yeah, Chantel, those are my three. They are three fantastic pieces of advice. And I especially love the last one. And I, I couldn't agree more with you. And I think that, you know, people always think about the investment of a coach, but really it, it it's, pays you back tenfold uh, when you have that person to, to bounce ideas off and to learn from and to be guided by. So thank you for sharing those with us, Frank. And I just want to say a massive thank you. You have an amazing energy and I've had an absolute blast talking to you today. So thanks for coming on the show today and thank you for sharing your years of experience with us, giving it as an insight into your business, into everything you've gone through with the rebranding, with hiring your amazing team and also with that amazing tech in your club. So thank you so much for joining us on the show today. My pleasure, Chantel. Thanks, everyone, for listening. MyZone is a wearable technology platform that leverages personal goal setting, gamification, and social platforms to motivate your members. To find out more, go to myzone.org. Get ready for this week's bonus segment, your extra injection of information, education, and inspiration to strengthen your fitness business. It's such a pleasure to be welcoming along our special guest for today. I'm chatting to Steve Tharrett, the co-founder of Club Intel. Steve, welcome back to the show. Well, Chantel, thank you very much. I'm uh, honored to be a part of your show. We're talking today about the 2018 International Fitness Industry Trend Study. Can you tell us a little bit about the study? Yes, uh, the study this year is in its fourth year. We launched it in 2014 and on an annual basis, we conduct this trend study. And the trend study looks at between 90 and 95 different trends across four categories being facilities, equipment, programs, and technology. And what we really want to measure is what percentage of operators adopt these different practices across each of these types of trends so that we can show not just in the present year what the level of adoption is, but over time what the growth has been. And the best way to identify a trend is to have data that shows you who's doing it and who's not, rather than looking at opinions, which is what a lot of other surveys do. So ours is very data-driven. It's very globally based. Uh, This year we have a translated into six different languages so our partners and associates around the world can find a language they feel comfortable answering the survey in. Stephen, it's so important that we get people involved in in taking part in this survey so you can gather that data. So give us an indication of who can actually take part in the study. First of all, anybody who is a owner, CEO, senior leader of a large club company, Uh, managers or department heads, such as fitness directors. But we also want Group X instructors and personal trainers to participate because we segment the data by the different types of professionals. So we know what the fitness professionals are saying, but at the same time, we'll know what the CEOs are saying. So it really cuts across all swaths of the fitness industry profession. At the same time, across all the countries that are in the fitness industry. Well, I can say that you are definitely speaking directly to the listeners of the Fitness Business Podcast because I'm pretty sure we tick every single one of those boxes. So I want to encourage all of you who are listening right now to make sure that you do take part in doing this 2018 International Fitness Industry Trend Study. It's something that benefits all of us from having this data. Um, Steve, tell us what date does the survey actually need to be completed by? We would like the survey data to be completed by the last day of October a Halloween here in the U.S. That's an easy one to remember. And tell us where the actual results end up being published. Okay, uh, we will produce it. We close it at the end of October. It takes us about a month to compile the data, do the segmentation, 
And usually the written report is available by the first week of September. We mail out the report to all of our partners, such as active management, uh, health club management, and others. But we also post it on our website so that anybody out there can download the report for free. We're probably one of the few industry reports that you don't have to pay to. All you have to do is go to our website at clubintel.com and you would be able to get the data. You know what, you are so right. It's really rare that we could get our hands on this type of information free of charge. So thank you so much for, for I know you work with a lot of partners and you're able to provide this, this really important research that you're doing. So thank you for making that available to our industry. Now, once again, I want to encourage everyone to get involved. Steve, to find out more information, it's best that they go to the Club Intel website. Is that correct? Yeah, our, our website is uh, www club-intel.com and on the first page or home page is something called in the news and there's a, a blurb about the survey and you can click on that and then it will take you to a page that shows all the links so if you want to do an English, Portuguese, Spanish, German, French uh, and Russian it's all there also some of our companion organizations uh, ACAD in Brazil uh, the Association in Portugal, uh, the German Association, a uh, leisure database company. Uh, there's various organizations that have it on their social media sites as well as on their web pages. Well, it certainly makes it very easy to access and being in all those different languages as well. Stephen, thank you so much for coming on and telling us about the 2018 International Fitness Industry Trend Study. I want to remind everyone that we will put the direct links to the Club Intel website in today's show notes. If anyone's got any questions, please make sure that you do go directly to the website or, of course, you can reach out to us and we'll put you in contact with the team at Club Intel. So, Steve, Thank you for coming on and all the best of luck with this year's survey. I can't wait to hear the results. Well, thank you very much, Chantel. Pre-Core Quick Fire 5. This week's Pre-Core Quick Fire 5 guest is Henna Inam. It is such a pleasure to be welcoming our guest along today. Henna, welcome along and thank you so much for joining us on the show. Oh, well, thank you, Chantal. I'm looking forward to it. We start off each of our shows with a pre-call, quick fire five. So can you tell everyone, why do you do what you do? Well, I feel like I um, get to have a lot of fun, um, have a lot of freedom in what I do. And the work that I do is actually my best way of feeling most useful to the world um, and using the talents that I have. And what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? Well, I... I'm going to suggest that there's two. One is mindfulness practice and the other is journaling. And what's an app or a system that you use to stay in control of your workload? So this is not a highly technologically superior app, but I would say it's really sitting down every day and thinking through what are my top three priorities for the day. Mm-hmm. Is that in conjunction with your journaling or is that a separate task that you do? Um, it's uh, something I do very quickly in the morning. Uh, And it's how I start off my mornings, which is generally when I journal as well. And tell us, what's one book, podcast or blog that you would recommend and why? So for me, I couldn't, I can't say that there's one. I would say that one that is one of my favorites is um, the On Being podcast with Krista Tippett. And then I am absolutely addicted to TED Talks. So Mm -hmm. in fact, I'm an organizer for TEDx Women. So um, that's definitely another thing that I absolutely love to watch. And just tell us quickly, tell us about that podcast, the podcast that you mentioned. What's it about? The On Being podcast with um, Krista Tippett is amazing. She really gets into these in-depth interviews um, that are tend to be, it can be on any really, a lot of different topics, but it tends to be very philosophical. One, you know, they can be about death and mortality, or they can be about living a full life, or they can be about joy. They're all topics that are very thoughtful and thought-provoking. And it just takes me out of the day-to-day to really think about what life is and what's important in life. And I just love her interviewing style because she goes into depth. 
Well, that sounds amazing. We will make sure that we find the link to that podcast and pop it in today's show notes. And tell everyone, give us a little bit of an idea about what we're going to be focusing on during your main interview. I would love for us to focus on living and working uh, with purpose. And we'll talk a little bit about my book, Wired for Authenticity, and how I found my purpose. And I talk about that in, in the book. Wonderful. Well, Henna, thank you so much for joining us today for the pre-call Quick Fire Five. Thank you. Before we finish off today, a reminder that all the resources, the links, and a transcript for today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. If there's a hole in your lead bucket, you'd fix it. Our founding partner, Active Management, will help you plug the hole in your online lead generating channel with a free download at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. Thank you for joining me for another week of the show. I'll see you next week. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Mm -hmm.